Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, you've guessed it. We've got a Shard event coming this weekend. I was actually unsure whether they were going to do something big for um, St. Patrick's Day because I feel like they have in the past. You know, we've had some lucky champions popping up. Nari the Lucky was like a St. Patrick's Fusion. I'm pretty sure Killian the Lucky, wherever he hides, must be a Bannerlord. Pretty sure Killian was also a fusion around St. Patrick's. And then back in the day, Shamrock was as well. And I wondered if there was going to be some sort of either St. Patrick's Day themed shard event or perhaps like a, a mini fusion, like an epic one running. But they're doing nothing like that. It's just a normal times 10 this weekend. Albeit there is, in the news today, something dropping tomorrow. So Path of the Clover event. Path of the Clover uh, event coming tomorrow. Apologies if I just offended all of the Irish viewers. And this is going to be something which reads like a... Uh, what's the last one we had? Anyway, one of those things where you earn points going down the different trees, yeah? Get artifacts and accessories. Upgrade champions is how you're going to earn clover coins this time. And you're going to be getting some goodies tomorrow. So I guess we'll see what that looks like tomorrow. But for today, let's jump into the times 10 champions. Now, some people... Are probably still doing the fusion supreme el Hain. my free to play dropped right off uh, after pretty much day one because i just could not get enough champion chase points going and the event just looked super stacked against being able to do it if you didn't have tons of shards so i've just been doing bits and pieces of events but not too worried about whether i get the fragments or not if i can do them i do them if not i leave it but the people that are obviously are going to be pulling shards during a summon rush. So this is going to be quite important to a lot of people that are still trying to do the fusion. Whilst they're pulling shards, are there decent champions up for grabs? And I'm going to be honest here. The epics look good. The legendaries... I don't know. It's hard to say they look bad. But they definitely don't look as god tier as we've seen uh, probably over the last... Maybe even as much as six months. Like It feels like every one is a massive one. Whereas... This one, they just feel like a couple of good ones and a couple of weaker ones to me. Let's start with the epics. The first epic is a pretty god tier epic, Seeker. Used in a lot of the best clan boss teams in the game. Used in great arena defense teams. Uh, generally cool for keeping your team moving. He's got his turn meter fill on his A2 and an extra turn. So although it's booked to three turns, it's as if it's booked to two turns because of the extra turn. Just means he cycles through this turn meter fill really quick. The reason why he's so good in arena defense is because of this passive. When he gets hit, he spreads increased defense. As long as it's a crit, he spreads increased defense across his team before they're hit. As long as he's further up the turn order than, than the rest of the team. So this is actually a really cool passive. He's got a provoke on his A1. Defense in arena on his um, aura as well. So yeah, Seeker, great start, honestly. Really good champion. Next one up, we've got... Another very good champion. So Mist Rider Dithy. Really good. So he's got an AoE decreased defense. This is on a four turn, but again, he gets an extra turn. I just realized that's the theme of these champions. So they're all going to be good for like cycling abilities. Gets an extra turn if he places it on all enemies. So if you weak hit, then you don't get that extra turn. But if you know what you're up against, then this is quick as well. Like it's basically a three turn cooldown on a drop defense, which is nice. He's also got a bit of a chance to get extra turn on his A1, plus a, a chance to remove a buff. And then he's got an extra turn on his A3 as well. And he's self-buffing, increase accuracy and attack. So he basically self-buffed, another turn. A, we drop defense, another turn. A1, maybe another turn. And then like you're back into him again. Like It's very cool for an epic to have this type of cycling. And yeah, cool epic. Lots of fun stuff going on with him. We've then got... One of the best epics in the game. Sacred Order or Banner Lords. I always get it wrong. We're going to go Sacred Order. Deacon. So Deacon Armstrong up there as one of the best general epics in the game. Like he's a game changer as an epic. He does so many things. Leech and a double hit. AoE drop defense. Turn me to fill. Enemy turn me to drop whilst getting an extra turn. Again, cycling turns. Speed everywhere. He's pretty much god tier as an epic. Into the void epic then. Best void epic in the game. Best epic in the game. Best champion in the game for wave clear. You could, she could definitely be up there for those titles. Like 
She is the best champion in the game for clearing enemies. Without a doubt. All she needs is a ton of buffs on your team. She rips them all off and the wave says goodbye. Um, you do need to get it back though. It's on a four turn. So you need someone who's going to help you get back to this. Or you need a team that's going to control the next wave until she gets back to it. She does have a chance to get that extra turn on her A1. And she brings you some AoE weaken and a crit rate boost on her A2. The A2 is a bit of a nothing skill really. But there's actually not that many champions in the game that place an AoE weaken. So certainly not from a void perspective. Because actually can be used in other stuff. But generally she's the wave killer. So yes, Seer, definitely a great epic to go for. Let's get on to the legendary Zen. First one. Looks sweet. I love the, the aesthetic of this dude. Samson the Smasher. He's got his mallet on the back. He's got his like fists ready to pummel. Yeah, this guy looks very, very cool. Really good base stats as well. Good base defense. Good base HP. His damage is based on HP as well. So, you know, he's, he's a pretty tanky boy. He's got an A1 double hitter, each hit chance to stun. Not bad. The A2, it's an AoE based on HP. It doesn't really hit crazy hard. It hits okay. So it removes all increased defense buffs from enemies before attacking. Places an extra hit if he kills someone. Basically, extra hit mechanics can be really strong. That's generally where you get your hard hitting champions from. The trouble with this dude is he's got to hit hard enough already to kill someone. And he doesn't really. Unless you've got someone extremely squishy on the enemy team. Doesn't really do that. Which means it's only ever really a single target hit. A single tar not single target, sorry. A single hit on the enemy wave. Therefore, it's not that strong. The A3 is where he gets his extra turn. So, again, it's an increased accuracy buff. Plus increased crit damage. Then he goes again. So he does boost his own stats before that. Before he does this, but it's just still not strong enough. He's then got a passive here, so decreases the damage he receives from crits by 20%. Counter attacks when hit by a crit and got a chance to stun. Quite nice. Uh, has a 50% chance of counter attacking the attacker when hit with a strong, normal, or weak hit. So I guess it's a definite crit. Uh, so it's a definite counter if he crits. If not, it's a 50 50. Pretty cool. The only thing that lets him down really is that this extra hit is conditional and he doesn't really hit the condition that often. Uh, defense in all battles. He's not bad, but he's definitely not god tier. Uh, next one's probably the best one on the list, I reckon. So, where is she? Shadowkin. So we've got Kayuku. Kayuku is a crazy, crazy legendary champion. Like, capable of doing some crazy stuff. First thing I'd say is in clan boss, absolutely obscene. And in arena defense, absolutely obscene. She's got a single target hit on her A1. Will place three hits if the target's under three debuffs. And this, when she's placing the three hits, this is hitting like crazy hard. Really hard. Each hit got a chance to place weaken as well. AoE on the A2. I really like the way they've done this skill. So, hooks to 100% chance of placing decreased attack. If someone else places decrease attack, not her, then it becomes a 100% chance of placing a burn. So you're kind of able to dictate what's going on, which is very cool. Also got this. This is where the extra turn comes for her. Ally protect for your team. Block damage for her. So she's protecting your team whilst not taking any damage. Very, very like, obscenely broken, honestly, if you get this working. And yeah, very cool. And then she's got a passive very similar to what I said with Seeker. So if she's hit with a crit, she heals your allies and then places decreased defense. So yeah, very cool ability. Defense in all battles. Cool legendary champion. I guess honestly, the next one is extremely good as well, in fairness. So Mashald, yeah, is extremely good. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Two of the legendaries top tier. So Mashald hits hard. One of the best buffs we've ever seen on a champion. Used to be in the dirt. Now he's a great legendary. So he's got an A1. Heals him by 30% of his damage. Will attack all enemies that are under leech. And he places leech on all enemies. So basically place a leech everywhere. Hit someone and he'll hit everybody else who's got leech. Cool thing about this is it doesn't count as an AoE hit. So they're all hit with a single target hit. The way you've got enemies like Hydra Heads that get a load of damage reduction for AoE. Doesn't get reduced against this dude. In fact, Michelle's in some of the biggest hitting teams 
in the game for Hydra. He's also in some of the best clan boss teams as well, if you want to get going on a two-for-one speed tune, because he's able to put increased speed out, but also gets an extra turn. A bit like Seeker again, he's, he's doubling through his turns really quick. Um, so he gives you Leech, he gives you increased speed, increased crit damage, uh, and he's got this cannon of an A3, rips off any buffs that, uh, that are on the enemy, smacks them for a one-shot, really cool A3 as well. Attacking dungeons, it's an okay aura, not the best, but yeah, good champion. So the final one then, this is going to be the one, the Void Legendary, that everybody's looking for. If you just wanted one, who would it be? Maybe not. Maybe not. So Supreme Aethel is the Void Legendary up for grabs this weekend. One of the new Supreme starter champs. Probably the worst by some way. Look, she hits hard. She hits hard, but her kit's a bit wonky. So, yeah, if there's people under three, she's going to attack them with her A1. A bit like what Michelle's doing. When there's leeches out there, but she's doing it with freezes out there. I think it's way worse. Firstly, if enemies are under freeze, they take less damage. Secondly, I don't think there's any champions in the game that put freeze out for two turns. So you know, with Leech, you can kind of keep it up the whole time. With freeze, you can't. Um, she does decrease the enemy's attack. Does increase her own attack when she's doing this skill. But it's only going up by 3% at a time. This needs to be like 10% for it to really be active. It hits for a reasonable amount. She's then got an A2, which is an AoE. Ignores strengthen, ally protect, unkillable. If they're under freeze. Then we'll place a freeze. So she doesn't kill him, she'll place a freeze. This hits hard. Yeah, it does hit hard. This is also a good ignore mechanic. But honestly, when people have got these sort of buffs up, generally, they've probably got block debuffs up as well. So the trouble is you need someone to freeze first. Then she goes and does this. The only champions that I can really think that are going to do this well to, to partner her with, your Carl, if he gets to go first, if you're in a speed team, the Carl freezes everyone, Aethel smacks everyone. That's good. Maybe someone like Gergo, but then he's ripping off buffs. Is he ripping off the right buffs so that the freeze gets placed? We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's close to being great, but it's not quite great. If they've got stone skin, it's a straight. They're not taking it anyway. Like this, it just, for the current meta and the current kind of state of the game, it doesn't quite work. The A3, she gives herself some nice buffs and gets the extra turn. She does give herself a fat shield yeah it's a really nice shield so this is actually a really nice ability the self buffing you've got this passive here as well so books to 30 percent chance of placing a freeze on attackers for one turn when she's hit when she's got that shield that's quite a nice like inbuilt frost set uh, goes up to 50 percent on all enemies for one turn when her shield is removed again i actually really like that it's a really good control ability so if you're thinking hard doom tower waves aoe freeze Another chance to freeze here as well. It almost feels like she's in between kits. Like maybe she should have had a tanky build and provoke to make use of this. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it also felt like maybe they were trying to make her anti the new Fire Knight, but they didn't really understand the way the mechanics work for the new Fire Knight. I don't know. She just doesn't, apart from maybe Doom Tower hard waves, I don't really get where she goes. Attacking Arena. So obviously they thought she was an Arena champion. I'm not really seeing it. So there you go, guys. That's the times 10 for this week. Let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you think differently as well about some of these champions. Keen to get your thoughts. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.